Hi there, here's a quick video analysis tutorial. Uh, once you enter the link for the software and your license key, you can either choose a file, import a video, or you can use one of the sample videos. I'll use the basketball shot video included for illustrative purposes. Alright, so uh, on the left here you've got a system option. That lets you first of all set a scale. So if we know that this person is say two meters tall, we can drag uh, one of these little uh, circles across the uh, known distance and it'll tell us the number of pixels and it says you know, how many meters does that correspond to. I'll just enter two. Now we've got our scale. All right, next let's put an origin on there. If we're going to track this basketball, let's put an origin at the beginning location. If we were tracking motion of, uh, let's say, something rolling or sliding down an incline, we could grab the X or Y circle and we could rotate our axes so that we could align the X or Y axes with the slope or any other direction of interest. We can also log our coordinates in polar, which is uh, R theta or Cartesian X, Y. And if you decide to change your mind later, uh, once you have a graph of the motion and a data set, if you switch from Cartesian to polar, or if you rotate the axes, it'll auto-update and, and auto-change all the, the data values to reflect your change in the coordinate system. Uh, all right, now let us track the ball by clicking Add. And I will then reveal the Track or Vectors option. I'll use Track. You can auto-track by dragging this target to your target, and then you can uh, start auto-tracking. Now, right now you can see there's a certain size of this target. It has the ball, the wrist, part of the guy's nose. When it auto-tracks, it's going to look for the ball, the arm, and the nose. So you may want to shrink this down so that you're just getting a section of the ball. And now when you auto-track, it will... Occasionally it will lose the cursor and you've got to reposition and then hit start auto tracking again. Here we can see that with auto tracking we've achieved a nice smooth plot of uh, X versus Y. All right, if I click on this, uh, this panel here, I can switch off the X or Y coordinate. I can also bring in X and Y velocity. And just click outside that dialog box to get the velocity. Uh, if I go back to the, uh, let's say I go back to the Y position. This is what you might track using the old um, projectile motion equations from high school physics. I can fit a curve to this by clicking on this graph options. Now I can apply a curve fit. I can apply linear or quadratic. Apply and it will give me the uh, parameters of the equation. Uh, distance is uh, y naught plus v naught t plus a half at squared. All right, I can close that down. If I didn't want the first couple of points because I thought they were outliers, I could go down to my data table. I could scroll up and I could click on uh, row one, right click and then strike through, and you can see it took some points off the curve. Strike through there, and I can strike through another one, All right, and it'll update the quadratic curve relationship accordingly. Uh, what else? Uh, I can expand the graph or data table to see it more clearly. Up here on this viewing pane, this view options, I can switch off the data table and the graph to make the video take up the entire screen if I want. Uh, I can enable replay mode. And what this will do, I get a new set of play controls here. It will play the portion of the video I log and it will show you the, uh, the track points. I have to hit the replay button again to get out of that mode. Okay. If you wanted to save this, you can click on this uh, little piece of paper here which defaults to the name untitled. It will let you export pictures of this or it will let you save this as a video analysis software experiment which you can load in and then you can retrieve this replay with your track points and your data set. Now I mentioned earlier that you can change the location of the origin and the coordinate system after the fact. 
looking at the graph and data table there, if I decided that I wanted y to be 0 when the ball hit the ground, I can go into System, and I can drag the origin, and it will automatically update the axes, and it will auto-update the table values. So I can come down here to the ground, and I can see that now the ball is hitting at y equals 0. Uh, and if I go over here, if I look at Polar, so I can go either Cartesian or Polar, Polar, the very last data point, as you can see, it has, from the origin, a radius and an angle to the ball, which should be distance and an angle of approximately zero. So here are the polar coordinates, 3.4 meters, and theta is 2 pi, or basically zero degrees, so we can see that the polar coordinates are correct. So we can use either the x and y or the r theta, um, if you want to bring this into Excel to use different plot formats or to save it as a data file that you can then load into MATLAB, uh, you can simply select the entire table and then you can right click, oops, you can select your data, you can right click to copy and then you can paste into Excel. All right, so that's the auto tracking, and it worked fairly well. Suppose I want to do manual tracking. All right, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to clear this data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I had done a strike through on some early points, which I thought were outliers. If I right-click on the table and do Restore All, it'll unstrike through those. And then I can delete my data set. If I could just get that scroll bar over to the three dots. Okay, three dots up there. Scrolled all the way to the right. Delete data set. You can't undo this. The other way to delete your data set, of course, is to uh, refresh the link to the software, but then that's also going to delete your scale. All right, so manual tracking. Okay, let me go back through the video. I can use the slider. I can also do a frame by frame, which can be... Uh, useful sometimes. Maybe you have a bit of dead space in your video before the motion starts and you want to go frame by frame to figure out exactly when to start tracking. So you can start tracking at any point in the video. This one's set up so that we can start at the beginning. Put my origin back where I want it. And select Cartesian. Now if I go to Add, uh, track right now is highlighted in green. If I click that to unhighlighted. If I go to the point I want to manually track, hover it over the ball, hit click, I get a data point. Click on the ball again. Keep clicking on the center of the ball as it moves, and eventually I will get a manual tracking data set, which may be more accurate than the auto tracking. There could be a number of reasons for that. Sometimes the auto tracking fails if the shading of the object changes as it moves into different light. Uh, if the background features change, sometimes if the object is moving too quickly, uh, the auto tracking will lag a little bit. If I go back and click on this, oops, I go back and click on that, and if I move my auto track target onto the ball, I can switch from manual tracking to auto tracking. I can also stop auto tracking and I can go back, hit this, and I can resume my manual tracking at any time. All right, I can also zoom in on the video while I'm doing this if I want to get more accurate manual tracking location. All right, so that's manual tracking. I'll zoom back out. And uh, those are the features of the video analysis software that uh, you'll need. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching.